Come on in, welcome to my home. Today we are going to talk about food from the book The Wizard's Butler by Nathan Lowell. What's interesting about this book is it's a book about transformation where you take one seemingly ordinary thing and with a little work you can change it into something a little bit more formal, say like your breakfast. I mean, how hard is it to put together a breakfast? A breakfast, And our main character finds out that putting together a breakfast isn't hard. Anybody can do this. If you take one of the breakfasts from the book, which had orange juice, and then it also had a bagel, cream cheese, and coffee. I mean, how hard is that to put together? However, how transformed is that sort of meal. Like I said, anybody can put together a breakfast like that. Toast your bagel, smear on some cream cheese, put some instant coffee into the microwave, make it nice and piping hot, put it on a napkin, and then pour some juice into a glass. You have it. You've got breakfast. But that's not really what this book is about. Well, it sort of is what this book is about. And so I decided I wanted to do something a little bit more transformative. I wanted to take this normal breakfast and take it up to a level where I think a butler, well, a wizard's butler, probably would have done it. Because one of the things that we find out is our wizard's butler, our wizard doesn't have a cooking staff. So our butler is having to cook all of the food. So, what would I do? Well, to begin with, if I knew I was having bagels, I'd probably make my own bagel. But, since we also know that a butler's job is to make the life of the person who he is employed by more easier, more satisfying for him or her, well, I would make it to that person's taste. And my taste runs in the realm of onion bagels. So that's what I do. I make onion bagels. Now, if you're interested in learning how to make onion bagels, you can hit that card. It will take you to my onion bagel recipe, but they're really easy to make. I mean, it's really simple, easy, because I use my bread maker. The bread maker does 90% of the work. Once you get all of your ingredients into the bread maker, it will knead for you. You do want to be careful not to overwork the bread, which is why once it was done with its dough setting and I took the bagels out, I did not really rough them up or knead them again before I formed them into balls and then poked a little hole through them so that they could then become like, you know, bagels. I just divided it into the four sections, then the four sections into eight sections, and then I had my my bagels, formed them into balls and covered them, and I let mine rise for about an hour. Why for about an hour? Because I wanted lighter, fluffier uh, bagels. And you'll find that through a bread maker, if you only let them rest for about 10 minutes, it's a little tough. So that's okay. So then we take our bagels, and while they are raising, we take a... Bleh, we, so then we take our bagels, and while they are raising, we heat up our hot water, putting in one tablespoon of baking soda. The baking soda is super important because the baking soda helps make that magical transformation. Without the baking soda, and you just boil your bagels, they, they're not going to come out. The baking soda helps give you that crisp outside texture while keeping it nice and light and fluffy inside. So you, bagel, you boil your bagel for about a minute on one side, flip it over and boil it for a minute on the other side. Then you go through all of the bagels. I did them in batches of three, except for the last two. And then I put them in the 425 degree oven and then bake them for about 15 minutes. Once they were done, they were done. So what's next? Well, I wanted to have something on that bagel, so I wanted cream cheese. This is where it gets interesting. So I found a recipe on how to make my own cream cheese, and I followed that recipe. That recipe is linked down below in the description, and you can see me following the recipe to the T, like 100% followed that recipe. And do you know what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. The cream cheese did not form. It did absolutely nothing. So I thought, 
Maybe I did it wrong. So off camera, I repeated the recipe again. And still the same thing. Nothing happened. And I mean, things are like that. Even though as you're making changes, you're trying to do things, you're trying to up your game, well, it might not work. And that's absolutely okay. That's one of the things which is important about this whole book is seeing the transformation and learning from your mistakes. And I don't know, I don't even know if I did make a mistake. Maybe the recipe didn't work. Maybe my milks weren't right. Don't know. So what could I do? Well, I had some extra cream cheese left over. So I took that cream cheese, which is about four ounces of cream cheese, added a tablespoon of dill, mixed that together, and suddenly we have something that we can work well on a bagel. So I put the bagel, I put the cream cheese on my homemade bagel after I toasted it in the oven, and then I put on smoked salmon. Oh, smoked salmon. I personally love smoked salmon. You might not like smoked salmon. That's absolutely fine, but we're making this more towards what I, since I'm looking at myself as the client, would like. Smoked salmon sounded pretty good. So what else are we having with this? We are having coffee. Now my original intention was to grind my own coffee. I ordered coffee beans and they didn't come in. They gave me ground coffee and I'm like, okay, I can work with this. So I got out my broken French press because my broken, my French, my new French press has not come in yet. And I made a simple coffee, which making simple coffee, I only made two cups of coffee, which is just two tablespoons of uh, coffee. I use ground coffee. I poured that into the container, added my two cups of hot, which is boiling water, and let that steep for about five minutes because I knew I wanted a strong cup of coffee. And then once it had steeped, I pressed down on the French press, hence the name, and poured that into my mug. I did this out of order. I realized that then. Because what was next is orange juice. Now, anybody can have orange juice. Orange juice, you can get it straight from a container, but wouldn't it be great to have fresh, squeezed orange juice? And I agree. It would be really, really great to have fresh squeeze orange juice. So that's what I did because I thought that was the kind of transformation that I wanted. So I went through it and squeezed my oranges. Originally, I was told that it would take about four oranges to get a cup of orange juice. It didn't. It took about eight oranges to get a cup of orange juice. And how I did mine was in my orange press or in my juice citrus press, I would press it the one way, then flip it around and press it the other way, and that would get most of the juice out of that citrus. Then I saved my citrus that I didn't use, and I could put that into my electric composter, which was really cool. But now we had something which was orange juice, but I know that I wanted to pour out the pour it so that there wasn't pulp in the orange juice, so I just strained it strained it into a glass, and then we had a new problem. I didn't think about the order. Having the operations is one thing, but making sure that you have the order of operations is another thing, which is just as important. So I sort of remade my whole meal. I, I thought about the order. I got the orange juice so it was nice and chilled, the coffee so it was nice and hot, and my bagel so that it was nice and coasty. Everything was all ready for me to taste it, so let's give it a taste. That was good. A homemade bagel with cream cheese. Yes, we did try to make our own cream cheese. That was an utter fail, and I think that sort of matches with the book. Then we have fresh squeezed orange juice. Very nice. It takes a lot of oranges to make orange juice and our coffee. You can have your coffee black or however, but I think this would have been a fairly good breakfast for a butler who's new at what he's doing. What do you think? That breakfast was amazing. I mean, simply amazing. While I'm not a big fan of coffee still, I'm working on it. I, I like coffee drinks, as you can tell by my coffee playlist. I do like my coffee drinks, but fresh squeezed orange juice, there really is 
nothing like that. And the bagel, that was so filling and so good. I mean, wow, it was really worth the effort. It was really worth making that change, making that transformation that I thought about, you know, there are other things that I can do that I can do a lot of work with and get them all done. It was so worth it. And that's what I think is, well, you have to read the book. If you are interested in hearing about my review for The Wizard's Butler, it comes out next week. Or if you're watching this after it, press that card. It will take you to that review. But it's something to think about. This is a great book that you're going to find that there's lots of food mentioned in this. And I just picked this because it was something that I could, I would definitely eat, I would definitely use, and it was so good. And now I have bagels that I can have at any moment. I'd like to take this time to thank these wonderful people who helped me decide to make breakfast. Yeah, if you'd like to become part of our Patreon family and get a behind-the-scenes weekly vlog, which just last week you saw that vlog and some of the things which go on behind the scenes, or if you want to help me decide what books I should be reading or what videos you'd like to see me making, you can go ahead and join that. It is a great place where people can talk amongst themselves and we talk about various things, or you can become a channel member and the same thing happens there too. It's just a whole lot of fun. Well, I hope you you enjoyed this. I hope you join me next week for the review of The Wizard's Butler, and you can go through some sort of transmorphosis. Transmorphosis? You can go through some sort of change and maybe find what you really like to do and what who you really are. It was a, it's something to think about. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you get to see you again next time you stop by.